What's going on everybody? Welcome back to IT Security Labs and my name is Howard. Today I'm very excited to be doing a machine from Hack the Box. It's called Return. I'm on this kick where I want to get my CSSP CPEs from Hack the Box and also get really good at attacking Windows. So I'm picking on every retired Windows machine that I can find and I'll be making a series of them and this is one of them. This one is called Return and as you can see here I've already signed into Hack the Box and it's already uh, running is on 10 10 11.108 my network looks like this where I actually kind of modified my network a little bit if you want a video about this please let me know in the comments and give me a thumbs up on this video but this is the victim machine 10 10 11 108 it's going through the hack the box firewalls routers whatever they have there with the VPN and I also set up an open sense router on my system in this case OpenSense is the client of hack the box that means that i can put my attacker kali linux here in my attacker windows using net and also port forwarding on this and be able to actually see things let me show you how cool this looks if you go in OpenSense, you can actually see some alerts as you attack because you can enable an intrusion detection system anything that i can get that will make this ctf not so ctfe i would do and this ability to be able to see alerts as I attack things is amazing. So I just modified it a little bit. If it, and if you want a full tutorial, let me know. Otherwise, um, we were going to be attacking our machine from my attack box here. First thing is, let's run our nmap. SV. I'm not scanning all ports here. I'm just going to scan just the top 1000 ports to make sure that I can at least be quick. I usually do like a VV for the boss, but I also find out that most of the time uh, on Hack the Box, you kind of have to add the host name to your Etsy host. But in this case, let's try uh, port 80. It's always a safe bet because this is what they always do. And sure enough, before my end map is done, I'm, I can actually see that we have a printer here. So this might be print nightmare or something like that. But right now I'm running Nmap. If I go to my intrusion detection system here and just hit the re refresh, notice how Nmap is being caught. That's the ET scan user agent that is in Nmap. Let me show you uh, the rule that fired and what it looks like. Again, this is what you see in Secure Onion in my other videos. But this time I'm using a firewall and again, Nmap scripting engine, they are late fires. We do not have access to the host-based intrusion detection system, but at least we can see network traffic. And it's cool because OpenSense is not blind to the encrypted tunnel that we might have had if we had a VPN client on Kali. So this time we can actually see it. And it's a bunch of Nmap stuff. Nothing really uh, fascinating there because it's just Nmap being caught. But again, if you come back here, port 53 is open port 80 so we can tell that this is a windows uh, system uh do we have a dns name here somewhere i guess we don't need it we have kbros uh smb so this is a windows machine with kbros enabled and it might be a domain controller with a printer service running again poor 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 uh security practice here it's a ctf after all right so now that we know we have a port 80 whoop, back on this one first for a second we can view page source see if there's anything interesting here because in ctfs they'll usually put like a comment in there but in this one there isn't this is the home we have the settings page and <laughs> we don't even need a username and password to see the settings so we can see now the server address is printer.return.local let's add that to our Etsy host vi slash Etsy host printer.return.local okay now that we did that save the file let's go back to the printer quick so it's on port 389 which is the RDP port kind of interesting and then our uh, username is SVC printer. So we'll document that we found a exposed. This is a information disclosure right here that we already found. SVC uh, dash printer. The password is not there. If we view in page source, we still won't be able to see it. 
yeah the value is still <laughs> dot sometimes if you come to page source you might be able to see it but in this case nada so what we would do is what if i changed this to be my tunnel ip address so if i go to my firewall vpn this is where i set up my vpn by the way uh connection status this is my tunnel ip address so i'll come and say hey printer how about you send me that information to me and then hopefully when it when it tries to register it will connect to to my kali so 389 i already have a port forward that says hey if a port comes uh for most common ports forward it to my kali linux machine so this should work if everything works netcat minus lv and p 389 so try to see if we we'll register the printer and update so while it's updating it will reach out to the server and guess what there we go we now have our password so i'll copy that let me see if i have uh where's my notes i'll just add a random page here I've not been taking notes, so <laughs> here's my password. This is interesting. Okay. And username. I think that's what it was. All right. So as we see printer, we got your password. And as you can guess, we're going to use if winrm is if winrm, hey, uh, minus i for IP. Let's go to the IP address for the user as v printer. And here's the password. So if everything works, if WinRM should reach out and get us in if WinRM is enabled. Okay, so you have to use single quotes. If you use double quotes, Kali thinks that you want to use the previous command. So we are already in with if WinRM. Uh, CD. Let's go to the desktop. Here's our flag. All right, we found user flag. That was an easy one. Let's go submit it. Make sure that it works. I would say that was right there. Okay, the flag was accepted. Now, once we get in, uh, we can enumerate like uh, we am I such all to see what permissions we have. Uh, said impersonate. We have a few here. We can throw in WinPs. Uh, we'll make our, our lives 10 times easier. <laughs> but let's see what groups we are a member of. SVC. Dash. I, I hope this is just a printer user, <laughs> but you'll be surprised what members of... It's part of domain users, of course. We're part of a Windows domain. It's a domain controller. Then server operators and print... Oh. Server operators, usually they have more permissions. If you Google this, actually... You find out that server operators can and can install software or start and restart s software and we have remote management use that means that uh, we can xrdp into this thing if we really wanted to if we got really desperate but for now let's see if we can just find services for our privileges we see that we have true or false if we can restart any of these services and if they are running a system we might be able to abuse them m2s d I like to pick on that one. Okay, so first we need to get netcat to that victim machine. Net netcat binary here. Maybe netcat or six not netcat sixty four or thirty two. We'll try both. Okay, so here is my netcat binary. I don't like to work with the original, so I'll copy that. Okay, and now that I have it here. Python three. Minus m http dot server eighty. Okay, so I need to upload it to my 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 machine here. Upload such root. Okay, that should upload my uh, netcat. There we go. Ls. There's my netcat. It's actually on C user service printer. Okay, now next. We need to rest we need to make sure that we try to abuse one of the services that we've saw.
from here. So I did try <laughs> uh, v VMSD, it didn't work. So I went through the list here and VSS actually is the only one that works here. So <laughs> I need to go and change my syntax to VSS. And what we're doing here is we're saying, hey, change the configuration file until this VSS service that is binary path is now on this path here and r run the command um, 10, 10, netcat, which, which is the binary that we put there to 999. So what we need to do is on our Kali, we just need to listen on 999, on 99999. So if we, if we run this, it should change the configuration file for VSS. Is it running already or is it stopped? Let's see. VSS. So it's stopped. We'll, we'll start it as soon as we get there. Okay. So my... Okay, it says it's, it stopped. Then we just need to start this service. Then we can say se.exe start VSS. And if we immediately go here, we get our um, shell as NT authority. So let's go and grab our root flag. I actually got burnt a couple of times here. That's why I have this command ready because the service will try a couple of times then it will fail. So the best way is to migrate this immediately to say start notepad plus plus uh, notepad and then immediately migrate but we found our root flag here. So this was a really good machine. Uh, the final part is we need to go and analyze to see if our uh, firewall, our intrusion detection system running on our firewall actually caught something. So let's submit the flag. That was our machine. We did not see a lot in our intrusion detection system. If you like this, please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video with everybody. Otherwise, thanks for being here, and I hope to see you next time.